Okay, so here's a model set up already. These are hanger doors that we're going to slide across and then they'll be uh, animated in Blender and we'll take the animation and export it to uh, Unreal Engine 4. So right now we just have the hanger door set up and I've already named these where this is called hanger threshold. This is door 1, door 2, and door 3. I just colored them different colors just so we could tell the difference while we're animating but you'll set your materials however you want so you notice they all have the same origin point and in the 3d viewport that's the zero 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 space there so I made them all so that they have that same point the first thing I normally do before I start building the armature is I select everything in the model even though they're all separate I select them all and I hit Control A to apply the rotation and scale so that it applies all the transforms that I made while I was modeling. Okay. If we hit Shift C, we can bring the cursor back to the center of the scene just in case we need it there. In fact, we're going to create the armature now, so that's a good spot for it. So I'm going to hit Shift A and make an armature. Select single bone. So there's our armature. Okay. So now this is actually named armature. And this here is named bone. So if we tab into edit mode, we're in edit mode, we can go down here and switch to edit mode. And we make another bone. We'll do shift D. Now this is bone one of armature. See? And this is bone of armature. So what, what I was talking about in the forum post was this is where I get most of my problems. If you change the skeleton name to anything but armature, it usually solves a lot of problems when exporting from Unreal Engine, or exporting from Blender, excuse me, to Unreal Engine. Let's call this SK Hanger Doors. And let's call this bone root. I always make a root bone. And then we'll call this bone um, uh, I always preface them with SK again. So let's call this SK door 1. In fact, we can call this SK root. It just keeps the naming convention straight in my head. So I want to align this to the door as best as I can. I'm going to take this door, tab into edit mode. I'm going to select this bottom face of the door. And I'm going to move the cursor here, shift S, cursor to select it. And I'll tab into edit mode on this bone, shift S, selection the cursor. And then I'm just going to do the same thing for this top node here at the tail of the bone. I'll say shift S, selection the cursor, and grab the blue um, widget handle here and pull it up. So now this bone for SK door 1 is aligned where I want it to be. Okay? So I'm going to do the same thing for these other two doors, except kind of quicker. So I'm just going to take this bone, and in, in, I'm in edit mode again. I'm going to take this bone, duplicate it once, constrain it on the, the y-axis. Oh, one thing I didn't mention was when I model for uh, Unreal Engine 4, I always model with the front of whatever I'm building facing down the x-axis, the positive x. So it's a little it's twisted 90 degrees from your traditional uh, blender modeling but I find this works easiest for me in, in working from blender to uh, Unreal Engine so this is modeled with what I consider the front or face of the object along the facing along the positive X so let's see I'll make another one of these this will be for the green door so let's just uh, let's just do this pretty quick here tab into edit mode, grab these two faces, shift S, cursor to select it, that puts them right in the middle, and then that puts the cursor right in the middle of the door. And I'm going to tab into edit mode, shift S, and do selection to cursor offset, so it just aligns it with the middle. And do the same thing for this door, select this front face, select this back face, shift S, cursor to select it, select this armature, tab into edit mode, this bone, shift S, selection the cursor offset so it keeps it centered. So now you can see I have 
bone door one, I'm going to say SK door two. And I'll label this one SK door three. So that's all set up. And basically we have this this bone, these bones in this armature as one armature with four bones right now. And we have this door a separate object, the second door a separate object, the third door a separate object, and the frame, the door frame or threshold a separate object. So now what we need to do is parent these bones. So all three of these bones need to parent to this bone. Because right now if we go into pose mode and we grab this, it just moves on its own, right? So we want all three of these bones to move with this bone. S subsequently, we have this hanger where we grab this threshold. It just moves on its own, right? We want it all to be one assembly, basically. So let's take this bone, go back into uh, edit mode, select all three of these bones, select this root bone last. It's the active object. It's just slightly lighter in color than the others but we know it's the active object because we selected it last and it's labeled here as SK root and then we'll hit control P and keep offset so now in pose mode when I grab this bone all the other bones go with it now each bone keeps its own setting but when I grab this they all move together okay so now we need to connect the doors to the bones so this hanger door or the hanger threshold, excuse me, needs to be parented to the root bone. So you see this, both these bones are still active, but this is actually the active selected bone, even in pose mode. If you click it again, it, it, it uh, deselects all the other bones. Technically, you could have them all selected. Whatever the last bone you select is the active bone, but just if it makes more sense, click it again so you know you're parenting this object to this bone. So we'll hit control P and bone. So now when we move this, we grab it. It takes the uh, hanger door frame, the door threshold with it. So what we want to do is the same thing for these doors. So this door should be parented to this bone, control P and then select bone. This door should be parented to this bone, control P and select bone. And this door should be parented to this bone, so control P and select bone. So now when we move these doors, or we move these bones rather, the doors are going to move with them. See? And if we hit Alt R, it clears the rotation. Alt G, it clears the location. And if we hit Alt S, it would clear the scale. But now effectively this is rigged and ready to animate. So I'm going to save it real quick. Okay. Just for the sake of saving it so we don't lose any work. So now we want to animate it. So I'm going to switch to animation up here, my scene settings. And I'm generally I'm going to keyframe all the bones in the first frame. So let's say location and rotation are keyframed. Okay? And then I'll take this bone, let's see. Let's animate this. Normally I choose the uh amount of frames that I want to animate to. So let's say I'm going to make this open in two seconds. So that's 30 frames a second, that's 60 frames. Okay. So let's go down to 60 frames here. I'm just scrolling in with the middle mouse wheel. And then let's see, I actually have this as frame one, so I'm going to grab it and move it over a frame, move it back a frame to frame zero. Okay and then I'm gonna go all, all the way to frame 60. Normally when I animate I try and do the beginning and end animations keyed first because I know let's say I want this door to go this far and then I want both of them to go this far and then let's say I want all three of them to slide behind a wall here so it ends up looking like this. So now that I have that I can key it here by pressing the I key so selecting location and rotation and we can see them all move, right? This solid line shows me that the uh, SK root bone had not moved at all, which is good. We don't want it to move. Okay, so now that the animation's complete, and you can mess with the keyframes and set the timing how you want it, but just for demonstration purposes, this is ready to go. Let's say this is ready to export. So now let's talk about the export settings for Unreal. 
So we have this set up, ready to go. We have an animation saved. Now if we go to Action Editor, you'll see that this by default has this SK Hangar Doors Action Name. So let's call it, um, just for the sake of naming it, we'll say these are Hangar Door um, Open. Okay, so that's the name of that action. All right, so then if we go to File, now we want to make sure everything's selected first. So let's set this into uh, Object Mode because it was in Pose Mode. Now we'll set it back to Object Mode. I'm just hitting Tab and Control Tab respectively to get it into Object Mode. We go to File export we're going to export as an FBX but like I said first we want to make sure everything's selected so hit A until everything's selected go to file export FBX I'll show you the settings I use for um, Blender I mean for Unreal Engine 4 first of all I always select I always check selected objects scale 1 uh, apply scale all local forward I make X forward up I make Z up and I want armature and mesh so I shift select armature and mesh I don't check these and I don't mess with those and for geometries I always use apply modifiers and use modifiers checked and I switch this to face then for armatures I uncheck add leaf bone and I leave this alone and for animations I use baked animations I always uncheck NLA strips because we're not using the nonlinear action editor, so I want these four selected. And then I have hangar door demo.fbx. I'll say export FBX. So that should be it. So now, just for the sake of memory, this is what the animation looks like. And it plays frames zero basically through 60. Okay, so I have my Unreal editor opened up. This is uh, my project, but I'm just going to bring this in here just for the sake of seeing it. So we're going to export, I mean import, pardon me, import, and then we'll go to the desktop here, and we'll look for uh, hanger. I think it was called hanger. Uh, I know it was called demo. No? Apparently I name a lot of things demo. Here's hangar door demo FBX. So we're going to open that. Now we want to import the skeletal mesh. We want to import mesh. We want to leave this blank because we want to use the skeleton that's part of this uh, animation, this object. I have import animations checked. I don't know if I've ever changed these settings. So you might want to double check that your settings match these. And then I always leave these off. I import my I import my materials and textures separately. One thing that is important is I always leave this import normals and tangents checked. I think it's compute normals by default. So I always use this. So then I say uh, import. It has no UVs. That's no big deal. We didn't make any UVs. Normally I have a UV unwrap, so the only thing I ever see in here normally is could not find the bind poles. It will use time zero as bind poles. So normally that's all I see. Now here we have the hangar door object, right? Skeletal mesh. And here it made a physics asset for it. And here's the skeleton. But now here is the animation. So when we double click this, we should see exactly what we saw in Blender. Which it looks like we do. And there you go. You have the working door. So then you could add triggers, you could add object overlaps to make the door open, you know, do all the other stuff you do in Unreal. But this was just a demo for the sake of showing how you get the animations from inside of uh, Blender, export it with those export options, and then you have the same exact thing inside of uh, Unreal Engine. So if we go to the skeleton, you can see all the different named objects matched what they were in Blender. And then we could select each one individually. So this is hangar threshold. This is door one. Uh, door one. SK door one is the skeleton. Door two is the object. SK door three is the, the skeleton. And door three is the object. Okay. 
So I hope that helps you. And uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.